Welcome to the Coronavirus Weekly Brief. We're your hosts. I'm David Sturman. And I'm Melissa salak with New America. Here are the headlines you need to know. As of Tuesday morning, there have been more than 2,938,620 coronavirus cases in the United States, and more than 131,000 people have died. Around a million people have recovered, and the United States has conducted more than 36 million tests. Worldwide, there have been 11,626,759 confirmed cases of coronavirus, with 538,190 deaths. At least 6.3 million people have recovered from the virus worldwide. Meanwhile, on Monday, India overtook Russia to become the third worst hit country in terms of coronavirus cases in the world, logging over 700,000 cases. India is now only behind the United States and Brazil. According to the country's health ministry, there were 23,000 new cases on Monday, down slightly from Sunday's record increase of 25,000 new cases. An open letter by 239 scientists from 32 countries that will be published in the journal Clinical Infectious Diseases states that the World Health Organization should acknowledge the role of airborne spread of COVID-19 and the need for governments to implement control measures, reports The Guardian. However, The Guardian notes, according to members of the WHO's Infection Prevention Committee, introducing new measures to guard against aerosol transmission was unfeasible and unlikely to make difference to the spread of infection. The scientists who endorse the open letter believe that the WHO and other health oversight bodies has underplayed the importance of aerosolized spread, especially in enclosed spaces, such as the outbreaks at meat processing plants and bars. They write, there is significant potential for inhalation exposure to viruses in microscopic respiratory droplets, micro droplets, at short to medium distances, and we are advocating for the use of preventive measures to mitigate this route of airborne transmission. These micro droplets can come from talking, sneezing, coughing, and even exhaling. The scientists call for, among other things, ultraviolet lights to kill the virus, effective ventilation in enclosed settings, and high-efficiency air filter systems. On Monday, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement announced that foreign students enrolled at U.S. universities will not be allowed to stay in the country if their classes are taught fully online, and they will either have to transfer to a different school or leave the country. Students will be allowed to remain in the United States if their classes involve an in-person or hybrid model. The World Health Organization, Stop TB Partnership, and Imperial College London predict that over 1 million deaths could result from a lack of treatment and preventative measures for AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria patients, reports CNN. The coronavirus has halted many vaccination and disease treatment programs all over the world from measles to malaria to polio, cancer, and AIDS. The Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria released survey information in June that found across 106 of the countries it works in, 85% reported disruptions to their HIV services and 78% and 73% to tuberculosis and malaria services, respectively. Nearly 20% reported severe disruptions for all three diseases, reports CNN. And according to the Washington Post, the Joint United Nations Program on HIV and AIDS and the WHO believe that a six-month interruption in health services and treatment medications caused by the coronavirus could result in an additional 500,000 deaths from AIDS and related diseases in sub-Saharan Africa in 2020 and 2021. On Monday, Harvard University announced that all of its fall classes would be conducted online with only 40% of the undergraduate students allowed to return to campus. The university will offer all first-year students the opportunity to live in single dorms on campus, as well as students who do not have access to technology needed to complete their courses. Students on campus will be required to wear masks, maintain social distancing, and will be tested every three days. Despite the changes, Harvard will not lower its tuition. Princeton announced similar protocols for the upcoming semester, including virtual learning for all classes. Temperature Temperature checks may not be the best way to determine coronavirus cases in public settings, but smell tests might fill the gap, reports Stat News. The inability of temperature checks to truly identify accurate coronavirus patient counts in public settings is supported by United States Transportation Security Administration head David Pikoski when he told reporters, quote, I know in talking to our medical professionals and talking to the Centers for Disease Control, is that temperature checks are not a guarantee that passengers who don't have an elevated temperature also don't have COVID-19, unquote. Because a fever can be caused by myriad reasons, reports CNBC. A study by Massachusetts General Hospital and King's College London 
published in the journal Nature Medicine, found that 65% of those who reported symptoms listed loss of taste and smell as one of their top symptoms. Further, a Monell Chemical Census Center analysis of 24 different coronavirus studies found that of 8,438 COVID-19 patients from 13 countries, 41% had a loss of smell. To see our daily brief, go to the address in our show notes and follow us on Twitter at New America ISP. Tune in next Monday for our next episode.